Well, here I am in the living room at home, and uh, since I can't travel around, I figured I'd put on my little tropical shirt here so I can look like the black Don Ho, you know. But sitting back, as I told you, that, um, you know, times are getting tight at home, and you may need something else to do, and why not read? But you can't read a good book without something to drink. I've got a little cranberry juice and some spice rum in here. But you can have the cranberry juice and spritzer, which is just as good for those who don't drink alcohol. But I tell you, I tell you, that'll get you right nice and ready for a book. And then I've got some things to nosh on here. Now normally, what you want to do uh, when you're reading a book, you don't want anything that's too greasy or sloppy. So I have these nice crackers here. These are herb crackers here, uh, pepper crack crackers. And I have some cheddar cheese, which are very good. You can do variations on a theme on that. You might want to put some locks on there, onions, whatever. And I also have this great cheese over here. It's Gouda cheese, but it has a pesto blend in it. And I have these little crackers here. They're pretzel thins. So you can take cheese, you can put cheese on there, you can put onions, you can do a whole lot of things with them and, and just make a whole little meal on that. Now, I normally wouldn't recommend these here. These are uh, turkey meatloaf sliders, all right? And I have some sweet baby rays on these bad boys. I love it. These are great, and, and I'm going to tell you why they're good for certain books. All right, now, you could do, uh, and, and basically what I did with this, I took uh, uh, turkey, ground turkey, and I just seasoned up with you no know, salt and pepper. I put some, um, uh, some egg in there. Uh, a little garlic powder and stuff like that. Nothing heavy, a little chopped onions. Mix it up, you know, made meatloaf out of it. And the Sweet Baby Rays. Now, I like Sweet Baby Rays with this. And you could also, also, you can use uh, 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 ground chicken uh, breast. That also, that's, that also works, too. The Sweet Baby Rays is nice with this. But if you want to go a little bit more exotic, because when I do barbecue, I like Gates barbecue sauce. I'm a Kansas City person. You know, I love Kansas City barbecue, but that's good. But see, this is good for certain things. Now, you look at this here, you get a mouthful, you know, you got to get nice, you know, in between paragraphs or chapters. You know, you take a little. Mm. Now, I'll tell you why this is good. Some of the books I'm going to talk about here from my library are very salacious. And they're very sexy. And, you know, you get into these books here, you know, you might want to have some to lick on, see? So when you eating some of this, you know, you got to lick your fingers when you get to the drama, especially the sexy part. All right. Enough. Barbara's already um, having trouble. All right, Barbara. Okay, I'm going to get to the books. She, she doesn't like messing around too much. She's not, you know, she doesn't like to shuck and jive like I do. Anyway, when you have a whole lot of time on your hands, it's good, to, it's good to get a great novel. I love Ken Follett, or Follett, however you want to pronounce it. He's a Welsh author, and he has this great trilogy. The first one is Pillars of the Earth. And this, these books here, Pillars of the Earth, Winter of the World, and Edge of Eternity, take you from the 12th century uh, in England and France all the way up to uh, post-civil rights era in the United States. They follow a few families, and let me tell you something. You get a hold of one of these books, you can't put it down. Trust me on this. These are just great books, they're great reading. You can get all these books on Amazon for people. A lot of stores are closed, you can't go out. Order these books on Amazon. Ken Follett, Pillars of the Earth, Winter of the World, and he also has Edge of Eternity. They will keep you going. They will keep you glued to your seat. I also like this too for pure escapism. Uh, this is the older edition. They probably have a newer one out. A Thousand Places to Go Before You Die. Oh, my God. And there are places that I've been to uh, in Jamaica and other places overseas that I read about in this book. And it's just a great book to take you to places you've never gone to and places you need to go. Now, this is a good book. I'm going to get the Barber's book in a second. I haven't read this yet. One of my friends, uh, Steve Manigo, he loves this book. This is about a brother. It's called All Blood Turns Red. It's about this brother, it's a, a true story. Runs, runs uh, all, all blood runs red. Okay, Barbara's corrected me. Anyway, I meant probably too much rum in that cranberry. <laughs> the legendary life of Eugene Bullard. He was a boxer, a pilot, soldier, spy. It's supposed to be a great read. And I'm gonna get to this probably next week. Wonderful book. Now, Barbara has a book here. Uh, you've probably seen it in the movie. And who was the one to play James Bond? Um, uh, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig, okay. Uh, the Girl with the Dragon tra Tattoo. It was a great movie. But you know, books are always better than the movie. And this is the... Barbara, you want to talk about this for a minute? 
Well, it's basically a book. Well, hold on, hold on. People want to see you. Lord, they want to see your loveliness. Yeah, there we go. Come on, mama. Talk well, to me. I think it's a great book. It's uh, It'll keep you uh, glued to the pages. There's family mystery. There's drama. There's there's love story. There's there's all kinds of action. It's, it's just a really good read. And this also... Um, comes in a trilogy. I don't have the other two books with me, but if you go online, Barnes & Noble or any other online bookstore, you should be able to find this. It's a really, really interesting book. All right. Hmm. That sounds good. Okay. Let's move on here. Uh, look, the one thing, you know, look, people, you can read whatever you want to read. You know, uh, I like pure escapism at times like this. I have, have some other books here, some political books, uh, Wealth and Poverty of Nations, The Banking in Baghdad. Eh, at times like this, it's not for me, but it may be for you. But I want to switch over now to the other side. Uh, this is uh, Holy Week here uh, around the world. And I've got some good uh, Christian books as well. A great book by Timothy Keller. It's called The Reason for God. And it's talking about believing in God in the age of skepticism. Uh, I think right now, a lot of folks who maybe not even believe in God are probably dusting off Bibles looking for something because no one can really explain this craziness we're going through right now. People are praying through on a serious note. People are dropping like flies. We know folks who have who've caught this disease and we're praying for them. So that's a good book to read. Um, another book here I find very interesting is by Wayne Grudem. It's called The Pop Politics According to the Bible. Now, you know, you find a whole lot of folks that are putting religion in politics these days. And in a sense, um, they are pretty much intertwined. So it's a really good read. Um, you know, you eat the meat and spit out the bones with it, but it has some good stuff in there. Now, I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion. My book, it's a short read, Discovering Your Hidden Power, Unleashing the Power of Words. Listen, words are very powerful. I wrote this book with the great uh, theologian, uh, Dr. A.R. Bernard. It's been around for a little while now. You can find this on Amazon and Zulon. But it's basically about, it's a kind of autobiographical about my life, what I've went through, uh, my trials and challenges. And a lot of people have found some good things in there. It's filled with scripture, uh, true-to-life stories. I kind of opened myself up uh, to, to a number of things in there. But the last thing I want to show you is a book here that I think everybody should read, whether you're a Christian or not. And of course, it's the number one bestseller in the world, the Bible. Now, why do I say this? You know, look, <laughs> I make my religion available, not acceptable. I'm not trying to throw anything on anybody. But if you want to get a good read, ain't nothing better than the Bible. It has more drama. It has more sex, murder, all sorts of stuff in it. Of course, it has some really good, empowering stuff for your soul. But it is a fantastic read. Forget about... The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston and all that stuff, Ben-Hur. You sit down and read this book, especially the Old Testament. Lord have mercy. You talk about David, Solomon, and whatnot. My boy Samson, please. You got enough stuff in here where you're definitely going to need some sliders because you're going to be doing more licking and sucking than you ever thought you might want to do. This is a serious book. I'm talking about sucking your fingers. Barbara's having a heart attack. Sucking your fingers, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need for stuff like this. Anyway, I'm going to start reading the book here. I think it's the all, all, uh, all Blood Runs Red. I'm going to get on that right now. And, you know, after you read all day long... Uh, you go to bed, then if you have a significant other, you might want to have him or her tell you a bedtime story. So, Barbara, you know, I've been nice to you all day. You know, I worked outside. I'm going to read a book. I'm leaving you alone. I know you're working. You going to tell me a bedtime story tonight? We'll talk about it. <laughs> Can you give me a preview? Later on, my dear. What about there once was a fool named Julian? <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out.